Hello everybody. Welcome to part two of the wet hair color pencil drawing. Um, I went ahead and did a few more layers on this inside of this middle portion. And um, this is the drawing that I'm only using very limited pencils and resources with. I've, um, so far I have used this um, Kaput Mortem Violet number 263 Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil. I like using these pencils, especially when I'm doing fur um, because they, they can get such a fine point and that is just awesome to work with. And there, it's a hard point. It's not gonna break off like some of the other points will on um, on the Prismacolors. They're softer, They're, that's a softer material in there. So it does break off. <clears throat> but this is, the, the polychromos are what I really like using when I'm doing fur and fine details, which I am gonna get into eventually. In the last video, um, if you watched it, you saw that I not only used this tool, but I also used a mono um, zero eraser and, and the electric eraser. All of these are valid drawing tools, but what I have decided to do, because I just really like, if you look at my reference, which is from Sue Cross Wildlife on Instagram. I just love these little parts of dark black that you see around the mouth, um, the eyelashes, some of these hairs that are flying out and the inside of that ear. I just love that contrast. So I'm gonna add that black to the drawing using my black polychromos. And you can tell it's quite a bit shorter. I use this thing a lot. Um, it's my go-to for, I mean, this is, if there's one pencil you want that will do a nice, sharp, rich black, get this black. Polychromos Faber-Castell 199, black 199. It's phenomenal. Um, and what I'm going to do with that, I've already actually started and I thought I would just go ahead and start recording, but very lightly here on his mouth, he's just got the cutest little mouth. Um, I'm going to very softly kind of using the side of my pencil. I'm not gonna press down with a point. I wanna use the side of my pencil and slowly layer in this black color. And once again, oh my goodness, this thing Try not to shake my table, and therefore, shake the camera. I'm not gonna get too crazy with it yet. I'm just gonna kind of lay it in. And you can see if you look at the reference, you can see how it kind of, the black and the dark kind of goes up in the top part of his nose there. So we're just very lightly, I mean very lightly gonna put that up there. It doesn't take much. You can always make it darker. It's harder to make it lighter. So I'm gonna add just a little dark there. I'll probably do this part and then who knows, maybe we'll come back later and darken it up. If I've learned anything I've learned, you step away from a photo that you're working on, you're working on, you're working on. <laughs> and uh, it's good to step away because then you see things that you don't see when you just work at it constantly and never step away. You've got to step away from your art. So we're gonna give him a little bit of dark here. Really define that cute little mouth. I'm gonna get my point a little sharper. have a Derwent manual sharpener over here. Um, it's incredible. I got it because it will also work with the Karen Dash pencils, which are a little bit bigger. And if you buy any sort of electric pencil sharpener, 
that it'll fit with these or regular pencils, but if you start using the Karen Dash pencils for any reason, I don't know if they did this on purpose when they made these, but they are considerably thicker. You can't tell really, but they really are thicker around and these will not fit in an electric pencil sharpener, your standard ones, they just won't. And uh, <clears throat> so I've gone through a couple of those and the electric pencil sharpeners, and then I've got a manual that I used, little hand pencil sharpener for the Karen Dash, and finally, I just watched a ton of YouTubers and, and got the recommendation for this DeWitt. And I can put that in the description too, which one it is, and I really, really like it. And it works with regular color pencils. It works with um, the softer leads, like your pastel pencils, if you're using those, those will break off in a regular pencil sharpener, it cause you nightmares. It's crazy. And um, this, little, this little manual, hand crank pencil sharpener, substantial. It works great. It will sharpen even those very, very soft pastel pencils. So you see how I'm just adding a little bit of color and look how that just defines that a little bit. That's awesome. I like that. And then I can take this very fine point that I've got now and just do a couple of light touches to get some of those deep shadows in between the hairs. And that just gives it dimension already. I'll probably go back and make it darker later. But I always start out a little lighter than I think because you just never know. You just never know. Give him a little bit more right there. I tell you, it just makes such a difference if you really love what you're drawing and you get pleasure out of just looking at the subject of your drawings. Like I just imagine this little bunny right here, how cute he is, how sweet he is. Oh my goodness. What a sweet pea. How cute. Now we're going to put a little bit of black here, not a ton, just a little bit for depth and dimension. And then if we look under his chin, it's very dark here under his chin. And because that goes way back and in, in under his chin in space, it doesn't get light. So that's why it's so dark. So we're going to add, I've already got the Kaput Mortem Violet pretty dark in here, but now I'm just going to lightly layer black over it. And go in just lightly, very lightly in those little white pieces of beard to pull out the depth the shadows in between the hairs, in between the hairs of the hair. This is a delicate process. I mean, and just enjoy it. Enjoy just taking your time, looking between your work and the reference. You can pause often. And as I said in the other video, it does not have to have exact, every hair is not gonna be exactly in the same place as the reference. If you're trying to do a realistic drawing, don't get freaked out about that. You're just trying to be true to the way the fur clumps and the way the light plays off of the fur that's farther out. Okay, now you see I've added, see how that all pops out a little more? There's a little white in there, I don't know if you can see it. I played with my um, Karen Dash white to see if I was gonna like it on his whiskers, and I do. So that's why those are really white. That is that is the Karen Dash that you see there. And we'll we'll do a little bit more of that later. But now I'm gonna look here. And since I'm adding some black, 
I can come in and add black in some of these darker spots. I'm not going to obsess about what's going on in the real photo. I've already started the direction of the fur. I've already got some clumps going. So now I'm just going to let my mind pick up a few of these darker places that I can see. This is the part I love. I love just going in, putting a little bit of light next to a wider piece of hair because it's deeper. It's deeper in there. And creating even clumps that weren't there before just because I've added a little clump of, a little bunch of shadow. And then voila, look at that, look at that. Oh, I love drawing. And before you know it, you've taken a little section, you've added depth. It makes sense. And you start seeing those little fuzzy pieces and those little hairs just pop out. Isn't that fun? I just love it. Look at that. Don't tell me you can't draw. You can. You just have to learn how to look at things and how to see things. Look at that. He is shaping up. Okay. And then something else you can do when you start bringing in your dark, which uh, I'm not, don't know if I want to do it white yet. You know, you can add some really, really fine hairs. Um, we're going to have some dark hairs that are going to have to be added right at the end. All these fun little ch 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 whiskers that we're going to add. But I don't know if I want to do it right yet. I do want to add a little bit of dimension here on his muzzle. I'm going to go overboard because I really want the majority of my shadows to be this darker Caput Mortem color. But one thing that is going to be black are his little bunny eyelashes. <laughs> How fun. Just very lightly intensify that shadow a little bit. Like I said, you start out light. You can always go darker if you think you want to go darker. It's much harder. You can't erase. We've already talked about that. You can't erase, but it's much harder to erase than it is just to add the darker later. Make it go darker if you want it. So intense that. See, I've added a little bit of depth in there. Everything's very subtle. Nothing huge. And do this eyelash. He's got his little eyes closed, shaking all that water off of him. Okay, I'm gonna stand back from it a little bit. I don't want to get too. Don't want to get too overboard. And these are very light strokes. You don't have to press hard. You really don't. It's very light strokes. Very sharp pencil is helpful. In fur, when you're drawing fur and you're drawing little hairs, they go in every little direction. It's 
not predictable. Don't find yourself being too meticulous about drawing hairs all in a row and even. They're not. They're not even. They go in different directions. So try to be a little random when you're drawing fur in. Let it go in different directions. Let's see, got a couple little. And see, I can make some very, very tiny hairs because I have a nice, sharp point on this guy. Okay. Give it a little bit more of the kaput mortem. I don't want to get too crazy with black. So I'm very lightly going to give it just a, um, a light overall glazing of this. And it's, I mean, I am barely applying any pressure at all. But I just want to give it a little bit more color for that kaput mortem and that shadow that's there. And I'm not worried about getting it too dark because as we know, I can come back in, pull some of it out with an eraser, or I can add at the very end touches of white on my care with my Caran Dash white or with a gel pen. So that is all stuff we can do. And the fun things you know, adding these little fun hairs like this just makes things look softer and more realistic. Got a little bit of darker there. <laughs> oh my goodness, he just makes me smile. This little guy. This little guy, I want that to stand out a little bit more. Okay. Look at this fun little guy. Okay. Let's see. I can't decide how I want to get some of those lighter parts pieces back in there. It's pretty dark right now. I need to bring some light stuff back in there. And <laughs> oh my gosh, this thing just cracks me up. Okay. Let's see, I'm gonna take my Tombow Model Eraser, see what I can do with that. Right here, pull out a little bit of white in there. Just little touches here and there. Bits. 
little fuzzy head. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take my um, white luminance. Sharpen it up. And just come in here, pull out a few white spots. right along the edge. And then a few in here where there's already lighter bits, I'm going to just throw a, a white little hair in there. There's especially some right on this ridge under his eye. And then there's some right here that just seem to be a little bit more white than the others. <laughs> See, I broke my tip. <sighs> That's all right. They're still sharp enough there. Another thing that's really good to use this Caran Dash White for is for burnishing. If you want to blend two colors together or blend any colors or soften any colors, grab a Caran Dash White and there's something special about the uh, what this is made of. I read some I read about it somewhere. I can't remember exactly what it is. There's something about the white that really makes it one of the best blenders. Now it will lighten, of course. It will also lighten, but it is phenomenal for blending. And there, there are times when I will purposefully make something darker than I know that I want it because I know when I come back in with that, with the Caran Dash, that it is going to blend out beautifully in just, just the light tone that I need. So keep that in mind. If you're looking to expand your art materials and you're not sure exactly what to get, I'm just, I'm telling you, definitely get a Caran Dash white. They're, they're more expensive. They're probably the most expensive um, pencils that I've seen out there that I use, but they are worth it. And if you just buy one Caran Dash, I cannot find them on Amazon anymore. So I actually ordered some through Dick Blick. Um, I'm, I don't know why you can't find them <laughs> on Amazon anymore. Okay, and then what I just did, this is the blender pencil. This is the Colorless Blender by Prismacolor. And the, the white was a little too starky white, so I smoothed it out a little bit, blended it in a little bit, which that's how you can get rid of the two white bits just go back in with a blender soften it up voila look at that so cool okay so there i've gotten him a little bit more Contrasty in the top, so adding just a little bit of black here and there. Not a bunch. You don't need a bunch. And as I'm adding it, I'm just adding a couple here and there. It looks random. And that's really the way these little guys are made. They're just, they got little random clumps of fur. bit more. 
more bold here on this fur right here. These things are hairy. Look at that. That cute little fur. Just gonna have little random bits sticking out here and there. Don't be scared. Just play with it. Study how it looks and how it works and then go for it. Very fast. There's a little bit more depth here that's not coming through. So I'm gonna go back in. with my Kaput Mortem and just lightly add a little bit of shadow right in there. So that will kind of show through a little bit. There we go. Go back to my black. I got some wild and crazy fur coming off of him there. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. And tiny, tiny black fur right there. Just tiny. Really tiny. And then to put, to make this look like white fur right here, um, rather than try to draw it, some of these little random hairs in white, I've got a bunch of white there already. I just come back in backwards like this with my black or my, you could also do it with Kaput Mortem, really lightly. And you see how that just makes it look like fur right there. Very subtle. more lashes on this side. It just looks like a happy little bunny taking a bath. Okay. I'm going to get too crazy. I can always come back and add more. There, we got some of those fine hairs in and that just, look how that softens him up really makes him look soft. And here, got a bunch of whiskers. You can separate those hairs out just by adding a tiny, wispy black line. And that gives me two hairs where there used to be one. Okay. Cool. What do you think? All right. Now I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna add some black in this ear. And that's really gonna make that pop out well. And once again, I am not pressing hard. And to make this look like fur going into the ear, I'm gonna go backwards into it, you see? Going backwards into it. And that makes the fur look like it's coming out over the ear, over the inside of the ear. Okay, now. Very carefully because it's hard to erase black. I'm going to add this color in here, this dark black color. And what's really cool is I've got this Kaput Mortem down here first, a layer of Kaput Mortem, which gives it a pinkish black appearance. A little bit of hue of a pink through the black, which you know the inside of the rabbit's ear is going to have some pink in there, right? Absolutely. See, I can add 
once again, using my backward strokes is how I can make it look like there's fur coming from the bunny over the ear. Maybe leave a little bit of that pink in there. Not totally cover it. If you want to get a really, really deep, rich black, one thing to, to learn to do is to put a color underneath it first. And that will make the color, the black on top, richer. There we go. Okay, so I might come in and make it even blacker, but that's a very good start. It already looks so much better. I'm glad I decided to add the black for sure. I like that. I like that a lot. Needs to be just a little bit more over here. When I'm looking at this, I see a lot more dark there than what I've got. It's not terrible. But there we go. Okay. So now, pretty cool. All right. So now what I can do is I can actually add this paw in here. I'm going to do that just by doing a thin layer of the Caput Mortem, Caput Mortem Violet always in the direction of the fur. The thing I'm trying to do now, see I can see my tracing line so I can kind of see what was there. And this actually is more, okay. Just have to make sure I understand my lines and my tracing. These should actually be darker, but I'll probably come in and do that with the black. Make those darker. I'm gonna be pulling out more lighter colors on top of this fur, but for now, it's just kind of bugging me that I don't have that, <laughs> that other paw in there. So I wanna get it in. And shadow here. I want to make sure that helps me define where that paw is and what it's doing. And See, he's, he's twisting. He's like shaking. So you get the action of the, the fur shaking. So I want to make sure I show that in the drawing. Once again, I'm just looking at the big shapes and blocking those out with a base layer in the direction of the fur. It's a little wet paw. My goodness, I bet Sue has a blast when she's out with her camera and these bunnies. If you check out her Instagram, she's got so many pictures and each one is just as interesting as the next. But she's got pictures of these bunnies playing and jousting and up on their hind feet, kind of... Um, I don't know what they're doing. Almost looks like they're playing leapfrog sometimes. But um, I'm thinking how fun this has to be for her to be able to just, you know, experience these little bunnies out in their natural habitat. She's over in the United Kingdom. 
And this is, this is what she does. She just takes these incredible pictures. Don't get crazy about the detail on this paw. This paw is gonna be interesting to do. But we're just gonna get that under layer there first. And then we'll come back in and get the lighter layers on top. Okay. And this fur is kind of dripping down a little bit here, so we're gonna show some direction that way. And see how it just starts to take shape as you're working with the, the shapes of the shadows, the direction of the fur. Squint at it every once in a while. Squint at your drawing and squint at the reference and you can kind of tell. Maybe sometimes you can catch, well I know not maybe, definitely sometimes you can catch where you've got maybe kind of a wrong shape going or a shadow in the wrong place. Don't be afraid just to squint, step back. And if you really get stumped, step away from the drawing. Go do something else, or better yet, you know what helps me is I will think I'm done with something, I'll take a picture of it, and I'll post it on Instagram, <laughs> thinking I'm done, and I'll post it next to um, the reference, and then the way it posts on um my Instagram feed automatically goes into my Facebook page feed. And the way things post on Instagram is different than the way they come across and post on um, Facebook. And it'll give me the side-by-side -side on Facebook. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I thought I was done. I'm not done. <laughs> I gotta fix this and I gotta fix that. And that shadow's wrong and it needs a highlight here. And what was I thinking? But that's okay. You just go back and fix it. It just really helps to see them side by side in a different setting besides on your drawing board. Just gonna come back here and give it a little bit of different texture to this paw. It's got a lot of texture to it, but if I can layer it right now, a little bit, that's all good. <laughs> Okay. Go back in here and make this. Where is that shadow at? That shadow's right there. And right there. There and right there. And right there. And a little bit there. Once again, I'm just kind of looking to see where are those, where would those shadows be if that were really fur? Yeah, there'd be some in there. There'd be some in there. Don't get obsessed with your reference. Use it as just that, a reference. Okay, go back in with a kaput more to make it a little bit darker here where this thing sweeps up. And very lightly because this is almost the color of the paper. You see that line here? That's my line for the outline of his fur. I'm gonna come in before I start going over it because that really is a lighter part of the drawing. See, that's lighter. I don't. I want a lot of that to be my paper color, just showing through. So I'm gonna come back in with my kneaded eraser and I'm just going to very lightly lighten that up a little bit. So it won't be, you can't tell. I still, I still see it, but it won't show through the pencil and the drawing. And in the first video where I accidentally hit the paper with my Kaput Morton Violet pen, pencil, <laughs> it's much lighter now. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get it much lighter than that, but I'm not too terribly worried because um, I don't think it's gonna show up that much in the original. If I do frame the original, if I do prints of these, 
what I can do is I'll see you how know, I can scan it. <coughs> Excuse me, I can scan it, take it into my photo editing program and do a um, stamp replacement over here and just get rid of that if, for future prints if I decide I wanna do future prints. So not worried about it. Do not stress about stuff like that when that happens, okay? It's all okay. It will be okay. Again, I'm just gonna take my kaput mortem. I feel like I need to put a few more shadows in here. Figure out where those shadows would be in the fur. Some of them are pretty deep. I have to come back in with my black here in a second. Let's see, what do I want to do? So basically I'm just taking this kaput mortem and I'm trying to do the shadows in between the lighter pieces of fur. So I am purposefully not trying not to look too much at my reference because then I get all confused about, well, that hair's not there, that hair's not there. So I'm trying to just say, okay, I think this makes sense that these pieces of hair would go this way, these pieces would go that way, and then I just, I'm drawing in the shadows in between, then I'm going to go back with my black, and I'm going to deepen those deepest parts of the shadows, just here and there. Random. Random's the name of the game, folks. Be random. Be light in your touch especially when you're working with such nice, sharp pencils. Okay. Think clumps of fur. about how the light hits it. Back in with some black and this, this deep part of his neck, he needs a little bit more black. 
pretty deep in there. Random little black shadows. With the way I'm using this black, I am so, I'm being very deliberately light in my touch. I want it to just barely darken the Caput Mortem Violet, darker than what it was. Uh, let's see. Still, this looks a little too clumpy to me. I'm wondering. Make it lightly. There we go. Put some light fur in there. Because the light's starting to hit outside this shadow. Now we added the blacks in, in this area. So now the light's starting to hit outside this this fur is sticking out farther than the bits and clumps that are deep inside his little hide so we're just gonna highlight that a little bit you know once again don't worry if you feel like you got it too white because we know we can go back with that blender and soften it up But adding little things like this really give dimension to the piece. flyaways they are there in the reference and they are cool <laughs> oh my gosh it's just a moving and a shaking watch myself because I get to where I look at the reference and I start trying to do the hairs exactly like the reference and I've been here saying I can't do that you're not supposed to do that and I, so I got to watch myself that I don't fall into that pattern I'm trying to make it exactly like the reference I want it to be close because I want it to be realistic Exact, and that's okay. <laughs> so fun. So fun. This fun furry guy. Okay, it's getting there. You see him? starting to emerge in all of his
wet glory. <laughs> oh my. Such a fuzzy guy. I'm gonna use my blender just to soften up some of these white places. I don't want them too stark, but we do want them there. He's really taking on a red tone adding this white in. I think because the Kaput Mortem Violet is just that. It is a violet. Erase away some of that color. Um, violet tone. So yeah, we're going to have some violet in there. Makes sense, right? Okay. shadow still looks a little fat to me. in the shadows here because of course that's next to his little tummy away from the sunlight a little bit see how that works isn't that cool really dark in there okay where are we at oh my goodness we're at 52 minutes i'm going to stop this for now i don't want it to get too long and uh, we'll continue with part three, which will be his paws and the lower part, hopefully I'll get that far, of his belly. All right, okay. Thanks for joining me, see you soon.